Hello, I'm you, Udi Ari. I'm not former ambassador, uh, Joram Ettinger, but since I have to go make a living, I will uh, have to um, go off to my uh, place of uh, work soon, and that's why I asked to speak right after Minister Begin and tell you the following. I would like to offer you a quote that uh, I believe says a lot for itself, and unfortunately uh, did not receive enough public uh, uh, attention. The uh, person who used to be, be a very important consultant to Yasser Arafat and uh, occasionally now consults to Abu Mazen, uh, Dr. Ahmed Khalidi, who lives in London, which is more convenient. But he's uh, the prominent intellectual, uh, to my mind, of uh, the Palestinian movement today. And he says the following, and I uh, would like to quote him here. He says, the idea of Palestinian state in the borders of 1967 is a punitive construct. That's the end of the quote, Khalidi says, and at least on the other side, people listen to him. He says, is nothing but a whip, which is intended to uh, uh, hinder the uh, uh, dream of the uh, Palestinian uh, movement about territory and about other things. But I tell you that uh, the idea of a uh, state within the borders of 1967 has lost its appeal to the Palestinian side a long time ago. There is no enthusiasm or craving or oomph to this idea of a small Palestinian state, Gaza, West Bank, uh, small East Jerusalem, in the borders of 1967. Almost any Palestinian to whom I speak about this will approve what I say. And Jews, especially from the left, have a problem. But just as Begin, Be Benny Begin said, this is reality. This is geology. This is the geology of, of the whole thing. Who's who told you, uh, asked me one important Palestinian, you all know, but I, I won't uh, state his name, who told you that our struggle for independence means a struggle for sovereignty as well? They are not synonyms. Independence and uh, sovereignty are not synonyms in the Palestinian um, lexicon. And the true Palestinian position um, says the following. We are fighting for our independence to uh, cast Israel off our shoulders, just be free. And that's something that we can all understand. But this still doesn't mean that we also want to divide up the land. And the situation is one that the uh, idea of Palestinian, uh, a Palestinian state in, in the, on the other side uh, becomes a battle cry, something uh, to chant uh, on the streets, but is no longer the real platform, the real political agenda. And what is happening is that this silent decision of the nation, the, the community which is at our doorstep is to continue with the line uh, that leads them to a continuous collapse, collapsing, bleeding, uh, impoverished, split up, collapsing together into our arms, us who don't want them into our unwilling arms. And what is happening in, in reality is a process that we should have recognized a long time ago, is a process of reverse annexation. The uh, Palestinians, M.K. Khotoveli, have decided to annex us. That's because we were not clever enough to annex them. Well, they decided to annex us. 
And this reverse annexation is not something which is declared or, or, or spoken outright, but it happens every day. And the question is whether we want to, to uh, reconcile ourselves to it. Are we willing even to spur it on, perhaps, encourage it? Or is our real interest one which uh, means that we should look for a way to stop this process and prevent this uh, collapse into our, our uh, unwilling arms, as I've said uh, or described it before. I myself am of, of the determined opinion, I'm not a politician, I'm not going to be one, but I am of the determined opinion that our time is severely limited, two or three years, no more. I hear those voices on the other side. I hear those uh, alternative ideas on the other side. We have two or three years to try and bring about a situation which I believe is of uh, Israeli interest of uh, establishing a Palestinian state despite them, force the Palestinians into sovereignty because otherwise it will be too late. The only way to go in that direction and I hope and pray that this government or another government will take that direction is to look for a formula which will be able to bypass this uh, obstacle, the obstacle that Benny Begin spoke about and rightfully so that there is no possibility and will not be any possibility in the foreseeable future of uh, reaching a permanent agreement which uh, solves all the uh, problems between us and the Palestinians. There is no way to strive uh, in, a, in a serious way and the Omar Abu Mazen, Abu Mazen uh, affair is, is, is uh, just the tip of the iceberg and uh, just one example and I'm telling you that the Prime Minister has not told all the details about it yet and it is uh, not uh, uh, my, my position to, to go into it right now but this is yet another um, proof for, for the fact that the other side is willing to hear proposals because every proposal will be better than the previous one but they're not going to respond to them and if they submit such a counter proposal it would be an unacceptable one such as the one Abu Mazen um, gave uh, Mert in, in this uh, respect 1.9 out of the uh, territory etc. In their internal dialogue, the Palestinians are talking about the alternatives, recognizing the fact that the idea of a single unitary state together will not be acceptable to the Israelis, uh, the vast majority at least. And they talk about other options. They uh, talk about ideas such as parallel statehood, two states on the same territory each of them responsible for its own citizens, but uh, I don't necessarily have a border line marked on the map between them. That's only one example of the kind of ideas that I have. Um, to the point then, I think that this reality um, results in a different conclusion to the one that we have just heard. And if I may propose so, I think that we should consider um, a move of trying to mobilize a broad international support. First of all, the U.S., they have to be talked into it. This is the White House that lacking the, the ability to continue with the current situation and the ability to move forward towards a permanent agreement, an overall agreement should be uh, sought after uh, for the interim uh, period not uh, according to the uh, second stage of the uh, second phase of the roadmap, but rather trying to cope with all the problems of the permanent status without actually getting to the uh, solution, the ultimate solution along the way. That is a large proportion of the West Bank uh, to the Palestinians as long as they establish a state. And I'm not uh, discussing the terms right now. As for Jerusalem, uh, there will be no agreement about the holy uh, sites. Uh, we, we just won't be able to do it. But yes, in Jerusalem, an agreement can be made or interim agreements can be made. 
to do with the Arab neighborhoods and uh, the management of the Holy Basin. About the refugees also, we won't be able to reach an agreement about the right of return, but yes, I believe we can reach agreements to do with the welfare and well-being and future of the Palestinians who reside on that uh, piece of land which will become a Palestinian state in the West Bank and in Gaza and give them uh, generous and give generous uh, prop propositions to Palestinians who uh, want it uh, for those who are outside that uh, territory. And I can continue enumerating several other points. But I have to conclude now, and my conclusion is we have no time. Anyone who believes that the current situation can go on without uh, reaching yet another explosion, um, in my uh, humble uh, but uh, decisive opinion, as the former Minister of Finance said, just doesn't listen and doesn't realize what is going on on the other side. We have only two or three years, and that's all. I thank you, and I'm sorry, but I have to get back to work now.